Welcome back to YouTube. We have Ahmed again from in depth tech reviews, and here's Google Apps updates roundup number 18. And in this video, I'm going to show you all the new changes in Google Apps that took place on the third and fourth week of March. So let's see what's new with Google Apps. But before getting started, let's make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified every time I post a new video. So let's jump in. I will start with an app called Stack. Google released this app just a few days ago. It will help you organize your documents, either if they are photos or PDF files under different stacks. As you see here, there are different categories, IDs, receipts, bills, and so on. So instead of having your documents scattered everywhere on the phone, this app will help you have everything in the same place. It will also provide you with the ability to search your documents. You can sync your documents with Google Drive, and I'm gonna show you some other cool features later in this video. But for now, if you want to add a document, you need to tap on the plus sign. It will give you three options, PDF file or gallery. When you tap on PDF, it will open your uh, file manager app to choose your PDF. And the second option will show you your photos so you can immediately choose one or you can simply use the built-in scanner in the app. So I have a screen recording to show you how it works. So in this video, I was trying to scan a receipt from the app. As you see here, I'm aligning my camera and then I'm gonna tap on a scan. It will take a few seconds to automatically crop the uh, document. And when you hit save, it will automatically try to figure out a title for this document based on what's written in the receipt. In my case, it picked up the name of the shop and used it as a title. This title later will help me to locate this document by searching for the name of the shop. Then you need to choose one of the stacks available. So let's try that. So here I used the receipts stack and now it's located under the receipts. Now let's take a look at the same receipt in the app itself to see what else we can do. So here's the same receipt and the first thing you get is the edit button. And here you can adjust the crop and rotation by tapping on the rotate button or tap and hold on the handles to adjust the crop. And as you see here, it will give you a magnifying glass to uh, help you with the edges. You can also adjust the color and here it will give you three different options, original, medium, and bright. Medium will try to enhance the text on the document and the bright will make things even brighter. And that's pretty much it under edit. And when you swipe up, you will see some information here already picked up from the document for a quick copy. In this case, it picked up the date of the receipt and also the total amount, but the total amount didn't work well with me. It says here 200. However, the total amount should be 210 because it picked up only the amount without the taxes. And it also mentions here uh, that this feature is in beta and you can send feedback for incorrect values. When you tap on send feedback, it will create an email to send your feedback straight away to the developer. Finally, you will see the stacks this document is listed under that you can edit as well. You can add multiple stacks. In this case, you can add as much stacks as you want. You can even create your own by tapping on the plus sign over here and give a name for your stack. It will be created and added to the list straight away. To deselect any of the stacks, simply tap on it one more time. Then tap on done and you will see them listed over here. It will also create uh, some tags that will show under organization. Uh, these tags created based on the information in your document. In this case, it created a tag with the name of the shop. Similarly, it's using the name of the shop in the title field as well. When you delete a, a tag, I couldn't find an option to manually create a tag myself. Uh, but you can undo the uh, action quickly. But if you uh, just deleted the tag without undo your action, you will not find an option to recreate the tag, but the title will not change. You still can search for the document using the name or the title. You can also share the document from the app by tapping on the share button and it will show you the most recent option at the top. You can set it as default by choosing always or just once to be able to use different options in the future. Uh, so let's try nearby share this time. And as you see here, it created a PDF version of the document ready to be shared. And when I tap on the button again, I have nearby share at the top. Uh, you can also rename the document by changing the title. You can also delete or send feedback. 
Now let's go back to the home page. And the first thing you can do is to search for your documents. You can use whatever piece of information you have. You can use the name, the title, or even the information inside the document can help you locate it. For example, when I type 200, that will be the amount in the receipt I scanned earlier. And I can locate it with this small piece of information. I can also type 15 March, which is the date of the receipt. And I still can get the document I want. So it's a very powerful search option. And as I mentioned earlier, you can back up your documents to the cloud. When you install the app for the first time, it will ask you if you would like to back up your documents. When you activate the option, you will be able to get access to them from any device using the same Google account. But if you want to change your settings later, you can tap on your avatar and then go to settings. And here you will see an option called save PDF copy to drive. And here it will take from your storage, but it will give you access to them everywhere. The first option you get is called import photos of documents. And here it will automatically add photos of documents from your camera roll to stack. You can also uh, protect your documents by using fingerprint or face unlock. And when you turn it on for the first time, it will ask you for authentication. Then it will turn on the switch. Next, you have export all documents to Drive. So if you are not already syncing your documents to Google Drive, you can export all of them and it will create a folder called Stack Export in your Google Drive to get access to all the documents. And finally, you can delete all, all your data from the device. And if you want to create or delete any of the stacks you have, you can go to the home page and tap on Edit. Here you can delete any stack you want. When you tap on it, it will give you the option to delete the stack. Even the automatically created stacks can be deleted as well. And you can increase your collection by choosing from the suggested stacks over here or create your own as I showed you earlier. Uh, here you have also another tab called All Documents. And this one will show you all the documents you have uh, based on the date they added to the app. And the final thing I will show you is the subcategories. Under some stacks, you will see different categories. When you go to IDs, for example, you will see driver license and passport. Under bills, you will see different kinds of bills, phone bill, utility, electricity, and cable. So you can tap on the plus sign to quickly add a document under this subcategory and so on. So I definitely recommend using this app starting now because it did help me a lot to organize my documents. Previously, I had all of them listed under one album called Documents in Google Photos. And to locate the document I want, I have to scroll through a grid of photos. But now I have the ability to search or go to the stack I want. It will also protect your documents using fingerprint or face lock so nobody can see them while scrolling through your gallery. In addition to having a much cleaner gallery instead of having the ugly photos of documents in the middle of your normal photos. Before jumping to the next category, let's give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, cdkoffers.com. From CDK Offers, you can purchase original Microsoft Windows 10 and Office keys in a very discounted price. Not only this, but you can also use my special promo code ID20 to get extra 20% discount. As you see, you can get yourself a Windows 10 OEM key for $16.18, which is insanely cheap. Please check the links in the description below. Now let's get back to the review. Next, Chromecast with Google TV. Now you will be able to create a profile for your kids to get more control over the content available for them. The new option will show as a notification in the side menu or you can click on the switch profile card. Then you will see a new option called add a kid. Clicking on it will give you a welcome screen. Click on get started then sign in with your kid's email or choose the email from the list if available. Wait for a few seconds to load. Put the password for your kid's email, then it will ask you for your account password. It will load for a couple more minutes and it will take you through a wizard to set some options. The first one is to select the apps allowed for this profile. If the app you selected might contain any content not suitable for kids, you will get a hint, then you can choose to either allow or cancel. So I will hit allow for the purpose of this video. After selecting the apps, click on install and continue. Next, you will get another screen with a list of options. The first one is to set the screen time. Underneath it, you can set a daily limit and a bedtime schedule. Let's start with the daily limit. And here you will be able to choose the days of the week. Hit next to choose the amount of time permitted and you are done. Setting the bedtime works the same way. It will ask you for the days of the week. 
Then it will ask you when the bedtime schedule begins and when it ends. Once you are done with the screen time options, the second item will allow you to lock your profile to restrict your kids from getting full access. By clicking on the turn on button, it will ask you for the password of your account. Once done, you will be able to use your existing pin code if you have any or create a new one. Once your pin code is set, when you try to switch profiles, it will ask you for the pin code. Follow the on-screen instructions to enter your PIN code and then it will show you the account switcher page to choose your profile. Back to the wizard and the third option is for choosing the ratings for movies and TV. And finally, the theme option. And from here you can choose between three different preloaded themes, Under the Sea, Space Travel and Dinosaur Jungle. Now the setup is done and here is how your kids profile will look like. Next, YouTube Music. And now you can activate the shuffle option while casting media and here is a quick screen recording while casting songs to my Chromecast and now the option is available to tap on. However, we still don't have the ability to repeat songs while casting. Next, Gboard. And now the Emoji Kitchen feature supports three new emojis, the scorpion, the snail and flowers. So as an example, now you can create combos using a snail and a cowboy for example and that's what you get. You can also try a scorpion with a flower and so on. Next, Google search. And now it allows you to practice problems in physics, chemistry and math. As an example here I searched for physics practice problems and I got this interactive card that I can use to test my knowledge in the topic. So for example when you answer a question and then tap on submit it will tell you if your answer is right or wrong and then you can jump to the next one and so on and you can also skip some questions if you want to. Here at the top you have some cards to help you more. You can find books, you can uh, see calculators for the physics examples and also some related searches and that also applies to the chemistry and math problems. You can also choose between different sources for the knowledge test. Next, Google Drive. And now it supports four new search operators to help you locate your documents. They are to, from, shared with and owned. So for example, if you want to locate a document that you shared with a specific email, you can simply type shared with a colon and then put the email it will show you the documents you shared with this email and that applies to the other operators as well and the second change is the new notifications tab previously to access your notifications you need to go to the side menu and then tap on notifications but now it's easier to access from here you can also take some actions as an example i can tap on the apk to uninstall it i can tap on the three dots to take any of those actions with a high level filter at the top as well next Google Photos. And now the buttons under the photo are labeled instead of showing just the icons. And under Memories, you might see a new collection called In the Spotlight. And this one is for concerts and outdoor shows. And here are some examples from Android Police and 9to5 Google websites. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are all the new changes I spotted in Google Apps in the third and fourth weeks of March. So I hope you like my video and if you do, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Thank you for watching.